Welcome back to another video. We're out here in a park in Staten Island going for a little walk. And today, we're gonna to be talking about something related to FPV, but not flying any drones or talking about drones specifically. Today, I wanna to talk about remote ID. Recently, XJet highlighted a video released by the FA that really talked about where remote ID is currently and what it may become in the future. And honestly, if it does become the monster that we all fear it might be, then it probably is the uh, death nail to all RC flying hobbies. And that's pretty disappointing because I now have a son and I wanna be able to fly drones with him, fly model aircrafts with him, go have some fun with RC stuff in a safe and controlled manner. <laughs> if you want more information about remote ID, what's happening, what's going on, and things you can or should be doing to help mitigate its effects, I'm leaving a link to a video from Joshua Bardwell, as well as the video from XJet down in the description below. Highly recommend checking them both out because being informed is honestly the most important part of this whole thing. The video that I referenced with the FAA is basically a video where they roll out what remote ID could mean. And there was like two or three takeaways that I had from that video. First, the FAA really needs to stop making remote ID sound like a digital license plate because digital license plates A are bad and B, we already have an equivalent to an actual license plate and that's your drone ID number on your drone. Whether you comply with that or not is up to you. And broadcasting more your location, your physical location, is something that no one would ever accept from a digital license plate. So the FAA needs to stop saying this is just a digital license plate because it's not. This is something that broadcasts your location, your drone's location, and a unique serial number. No license plate does that, and nobody would accept a digital license plate that does that either. The second thing in that video that they talk about is they really don't seem to understand what FPV drones are for or what they do or how people fly them because they talk about somebody trying to get a better view of a soccer or softball game with an FPV drone. Um, and for those that don't know, an FPV drone has a fixed camera on it that you can see out of and then the other camera records for later viewing. The fixed camera is at a pretty extreme angle so you can't just sit, hover and look or zoom or wander around. You really have to be cruising at speed. You would never, ever, ever use an FPV drone to spectate a soccer game. That is insane and they need to just stop. And last thing that's important, and I think this is the scary part of the whole remote ID thing, is they do talk about keeping location history. So they're gonna basically have in certain locations a historical log of who with those remote ID modules flew in that area. To me, that's a little ominous. I really don't want my history of piloting or where I've flown to be saved by anyone, uh, mostly because I just don't want that there. It's information that I would like to keep private. I'm flying privately. I'm not flying around anybody. I'm not flying uh, around uh, in places that I'm not legally allowed to be in. So I think that really is a little too much for me to bear. The core of remote ID is a fairly good idea when it comes to long range flight, when it comes to beyond a visual line of sight, or when it comes to heavily, heavily trafficked areas. If you're gonna be flying delivery drones inside a city and you're gonna be flying beyond your visual line of sight, having a way to identify that operator and that drone is going to be a positive in general. There it's gonna foster a culture of accountability and there is gonna be a little bit of safety added. Uh, and also if there is an accident to happen, you're going to know who was the one who was piloting that remote system when that accident did occur. So you do have, again, somebody to take responsibility for actions. When talking about hobbyists, remote ID is a burden to the hobbyist and also puts them in physical danger, especially since drone pilots usually have a significant amount of equipment that is relatively expensive with them. Broadcasting the location opens them up to physical violence and also theft and other crimes of opportunity. Giving the location of an individual to every single person who has a cell phone app seems a bit dubious, um, especially when that person may be wearing goggles, making them less aware of their surroundings. I really, really hope that this part of the rule has an exception made. A lot of other locations that have implemented similar remote ID laws have given carve outs for hobbyists or hand handmade drones. So if you're building the drone yourself, if the drone doesn't have GPS on top of it or in it, 
then you really don't have to run a remote ID module. And I think that kind of exception makes sense. Drone flyers are not looking for special treatment. RC plane pilots are not looking for special treatment. We're looking for regulation that doesn't cause unnecessary burden, that actually increases safety, and doesn't just create a theater of safety. These regulations are great and can be a positive for large companies looking for a large-scale drone rollout and operation. But for individual hobbyists, this stuff just really doesn't make a ton of sense. And it's gonna end up being a negative to the hobby in general. Even if it doesn't kill the hobby, new people getting into this hobby aren't gonna to wanna to deal with all the headaches and regulations you have to get into it. It's important to know that I really do respect safety and that's something that this hobby has been extremely good about. Uh, look through pretty much any clips you want and you're not going to find an example of an FPV drone flown by a hobbyist causing destruction when flown normally. Can bad actors use drones to cause injury, damage, destruction, etc.? Absolutely. But those people are not going to comply with remote ID. <laughs> it's just regulation that is going to end up burdening hobbyists and professionals who just want to make content, fly drones for fun, or just generally enjoy a hobby outdoors. So for me, I think remote ID is ridiculous and I really hope to see it disappear in the near future. If I were to completely comply with remote ID and I was flying outside, my drone is gonna broadcast its own information and location as well as my personal location. For me, especially if I have my son with me, that is kind of unacceptable. Uh, if I'm flying it in the FPV, I have goggles on, I can't necessarily see exactly what's going on immediately around me, and I'm not putting my son in any kind of risk. Just unacceptable. And so for me, it's probably going to be a selective compliance outside of that, but we will see when September comes around what the actual situation ends up being. When flying professionally, I'm not gonna have really a choice. I have to have a remote ID module on my drones, whatever I'm using to film with. Of note, if you're flying FPV drones, if you're flying under any kind of cover, so even if you're flying in a little gazebo, if you're flying inside a building, you actually don't need a Part 107 to operate a drone. The Part 107 is only if you're operating a drone within national airspace. So if you're flying in a covered area outside, not tree cover, that doesn't count, but if you're under any kind of structure, if you're in a gymnasium, if you're in a classroom, wherever you are, indoors, you do not need a Part 107 to fly commercially. With all that said, uh, please go check out the video from Joshua Bardwell where he really dives into what remote ID is, what compliance means, what uh, non-compliance can mean, what uh, you can do to help either make the situation better uh, or help inflict positive change. I definitely would recommend go checking out that video. I'm also gonna leave a link to the XJet video where he first calls out this uh, video from the FA that is wildly uh, out of left field and definitely feels very ominous <laughs> for the hobby. And then last, I'm gonna include a video uh, from Mads Tech where he also talks about remote ID, how it came to be, what it is, and what uh, you can do whether it's compliance or non-compliance and what those implications could be for you. As always, it's a personal choice whether you comply or not. Honestly, the best thing to do is just do whatever feels right to you. If the situation requires you to comply, comply. And if you're flying with people who are complying with remote ID, it's fine. You don't have to bother them. Don't leave them alone. There's no reason to be angry if somebody else is deciding that they need to comply. Same goes the other way around. If people are not complying with remote ID because they don't want to share that information, they don't feel it's right, just whatever, let them be. Don't attack them, don't provoke them. We need to stay together as a community. We need to stand together. That's the only way we're gonna end up beating this and making it a better place for enthusiasts to fly RC anything. Same goes for people who fly at AMA only fields. That's what they do. Just let them enjoy the hobby as it is and be friendly. Together, we are united. Together, we can beat this. Together, we are going to make sure this hobby sticks around because the next generation is gonna love flying drones like we do. And I am very sure of that, and I'm going to fight tooth and nail to make sure that's the case. With all that said, thank you all for joining me. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace, bye. Posted by the FAA. Hey.
Hey. Hello. Hi.